Yes. Yep. Go, go, go. Right. I am not used to Max at all. Um, can I just do this? All right. The. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, I, I asked you to, is it wasn't you? I am present in this question. No, why? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, is there any suggestions or requirements that they're talking about? Yeah, why are they? I wrote this in the channel. I didn't see any. Oh, yeah, I said it. I didn't see any. I didn't see any. I didn't see any. I didn't see any. So it was you, not the one. <laughs> they posted some in the lot, like, now in the Discord, about how you were supposed to use LaTeX, etc. Uh, anywho, the, the glare there is, yeah. The size of the report. The report should be as small as possible, but not too small. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's written. <laughs> Vegas stuff ever, right? Oh, yeah. Why is this so extremely slow? Yeah, that is why I include some extra things. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> right. As you can see, today I'm going to talk uh, quickly about object detection with a, with a bit of more. Uh, I'd like to say that I started this project under two weeks ago, so there's some limitations to my knowledge and this the scope of this presentation. But anywho, I'll, I'll try. Uh, quick history of... Give, give me a second. The, how do, I, how do you do anything on a Mac? What do you want? I try to resize the uh, note window here. Anywho, so yeah, object detection is a part of the computer vision field. The computer vision field isn't really a new field like a lot of the like a lot of the fields that we are actually working on. The algorithms were and a lot of logic was developed like hundred years ago, eighty years ago. One of the first, I do believe one of the first usages of computer vision that I uh, that I remember, I couldn't find it, was by the U.S. Postal Service that used uh, text to uh, use the basic rasterization on uh, uh, texts uh, to detect uh, addresses, etc. for mail sorting. Uh, I couldn't find it, but this was a long time ago, if I remember correctly. Uh, com but yeah, one of the um, computer version relies a lot on data sets, uh, which is why it actually boomed a lot in 2010 at, um, onwards. Because in 2009, there was a large uh, publication of a data set called ImageNet, which uh, had 14 million hand annotated data sets. I will come back to more about that later. Which uh, and also with increasing processing powers and now more available data sets, uh, computer vision boomed a lot in 2012 and onwards. It stagnated apparently in 2010 uh, until the data sets became available and neural nets become more popular. Uh, for example, uh, un until then it wasn't actually possible to use a lot of this stuff in a reliable fashion. But in 2010, the first shallow neural net uh, was used on the ImageNet data set for, that used the ImageNet the data set with a 30% error rate. And then it was beaten by deep neural net two years later with a 15% uh, error rate. And in 2015, with 4% error rate. Uh, deep and shallow neural net refer references the number of layers in the net. Shallow has like a few, while deep has infinite of the internet, I guess. Um, but yeah, computer vision and ob object detection can be applied in many fields, with uh, autonomous cars being one of the more hot fields in the latest years. Oh, come on. Yeah, I kind of hate doing this, but I kind of have to. I hate text dumps. So here we go. Because a lot of these words will be used in the future, so it's kind of important that we actually cover them, and uh, but they're not important enough to get their own slides. Uh, yeah, the word on top augmentation. Uh, is defined as creating more training data by distorting your input images, et cetera, flip them, distort them, blur them, make them other channels, et cetera, which means that you can make more training data or uh, from a smaller set. Again, all of this will be applied later. This is, this is not just a random dump. Uh, annotation is the meaning of a text file or similar that contains the information, uh, contains an information about all the images in data set about where specific instances of a class is located, where it is and what it is. 
For example, if you have a billion faces in various images, but they're scattered around, the annotated uh, annotation here means that the file contains like a bunch of uh, coordinates in the image to kind of say, here's a face. Uh, backdrop uh, is, we had a lovely talk uh, last week about deep learning, etc. So this should be familiar. It is one of the methods that uh, neural nets learn by self-adjusting, uh, by going back to the, to the network and self-adjust a lot of the weights, etc. based on how uh, incorrect they were uh, for each neuron. Uh, channel, a channel in this regard is a color channel. Uh, this is, for example, RGB. I mean, most color images uh, operate in three uh, channels, while uh, black and white images operate in one. Again, uh, relevant later, because that's, um, yeah. Class is a type that to thing that will be identified, human face, arm, table, chair, etc. Classification is the uh, is something you do when you only want to see if an image contains a class. Does this image contain a table, for example? You don't care where the table is, you just don't want to know where it is. Um, yeah, CUDA is the, and I can't scroll. Uh, CUDA is the uh, NVIDIA, yeah, the scroll wheel doesn't work. Why, has, why does it have inverse scrolling? Okay, sure, whatever. CUDA is uh, made by NVIDIA and is one way of the NVIDIA, uh, one of the leading uh, graphics cards uh, manufacturers are actually doing a lot of research on deep learning and neural nets, et cetera, and has made a, a framework called CUDA that you can run Python scripts in it. It is combined with OpenCV. Uh, IOE, intersection of union, which is a metric, metric that is used to uh, see how accurate the uh, object detection network is able to predict. Uh, it's the bounding box. Is the bounding box fitting with the actual image or the object you're trying to detect? Um, of a model, yeah, I, I didn't remove that, those. False negative and false positives, they weren't supposed to be there, but I think you all kind of know what I mean. It's like, yeah, at this rate. Uh, model two is basically, you don't need to train your own data set anymore, more or less. Someone else has already done it for you on, for example, the Coco or the ImageNet data set, it is pre-trained. -pre you, you can just download the weights and the, uh, uh, the net, and then you can build upon that, which is more and more common, because it requires little effort. Occlusion uh, is just a word that says that uh, if it's a part, um, if the thing you're trying to look at is hidden, hidden behind something, if it's blurred, if it's skewed, if it's scale, etc. Synthetic data, kind of like augmentation, but not. It is when you create data from scratch. Um, it's just, if you have, you can, for example, insert a bunch of, if you have a bunch of PNGs of um, stop signs, for example, you can just insert them into random data or images and then just automat automatically annotate that data because you already know where it is comparatively to hand annotation, et cetera, which is slightly more. Uh, also, to build slightly more exposition dump, a lot of this uh, object detection uh, frameworks, etc., can be improved by the usage of different object detection methods or other frameworks. For example, something that we call a statistical ana analysis. Again, a lot of this will be um, relevant later for the projects and when I talk about uh, the current state of it. Statistical analysis, uh, analysis is when you know that thing you're looking for, for example, is always in the middle of the images you are observing, or down to the right, down to the left, which means that you can effectively ignore most of the image. It boosts processing power. Uh, heat map, for example, is a way of just the visualization this for humans. Uh, image pyramids, as I mentioned, scaling is an issue. If you have a, if I have a picture of a human, you don't know if the human you're trying to locate is tiny or far in the distance or Close, uh, close to you, which means that you have to have some sort of scaling method. Um, and also, in, as I mentioned with the pre-trained networks and uh, model zoos, one of the issues of doing that is that you end up with a deep, 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 deep dream images. A lot of the current uh, state-of-the-art neural nets are trained using the same data. They are used uh, trained using the same input, uh, 
input data, which means that the game biased. As you can see in deep dreaming images, where you can see that this was apparently trained on a dog network, even though it might be uh, used for something completely different, which is kind of bad if you're going to do very specific uh, or uh, different kind of uh, object detection network. If you want to look at humans, that's easy. There's a million of them, uh, networks up there. Uh, other ways of speeding up processing is that you can do a threshold, uh, lower decrease threshold. Uh, that means that the accuracy increases or decreases, but the performance goes the other way around, of course. Lower threshold, better performance. So you kind of need to balance it out. Classification, uh, I already talked about. Augmentation, synthetic data, I already talked about. I forgot to remove a bunch of this. Sorry about this. And also ignoring of channels. That will be relevant in the future because if you want to work on an RGBA image, you might need to account for four channels. If you work on a black and white image, you only care about zero to 256. There's uh, um, data points or one channel. Easy piece, a lot faster. It has some drawbacks that I will come to later because it broke my project, but yeah. <coughs> anyway, some of the, now I'm just gonna do a timeline and story of uh, the object detection basically. This was the old way of doing it. Color detection. Easy, cheap, super reliable if you have specific images. Uh, difficult to use on non static images if things move around uh, and have a lot of colors. It's difficult. It is often used as part of object detection. A lot of the systems are built upon each other, which is why I feel like it's just nice to know the past and how they built into the future. This one is the one I used for my project, and I'll introduce later which is called template matching. Template matching is old, and I don't know why I used it, uh, but um, it was basically introduced in 2001 as a fancy way of edge detection. It is, it basically takes the input image. Can you see my mouse? Yeah. 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 You take an input image, and then you literally run it across the image to see if you can find matches to the pixels behind it. As you can imagine, it's not very accurate. It, is very reliant on scale because if the image, input image, or the uh, template image you're looking at is off scale, you ain't going to find matches. Same if it's slightly skewed, blurred, etc. It is highly time consuming. I found that uh, and scales poorly. It literally has a, um, a what, uh, what's it called again? And it just scales with the same amount. Hmm? Now, linear scale, the more template, the more input images you have, for example, the, the longer time it will take. It doesn't have any form of effectiveness. It also works mostly in black and white, uh, as you can see here. The image here shows different forms of edge detection algorithms. You could uh, skew the image um, in the OpenCV to, um, <coughs> to improve some of the accuracy part. It works very well on uh, static images, I would say. In this image, it works wonderful, mostly because it, this image is taken from this image. But it's heavily sliced. It's very size uh, reliant. It is, again, old, and it's used as core for most facial detection sets, or at the next part, which is uh, detection of people. The hog uh, detector, uh, I can't remember what, it's, uh, what it stands for, but uh, anywho. It was built on uh, template matching. Uh, it came out in 2005. It parted up the image, rasterized it, and then tried to run template matching on the parts that it um, uh, rasterized. It works in multiple scales compared to the template matching, which is really great because people are all over the place. It is not that accurate. And, you know, uh, cameras back in the day wasn't very good. Uh, and then the in 2018, uh, 2008, we built on that with a deformable part uh, base model, which fragmented the image and then kind of set up a basic neural net training to kind of uh, ask the question what it makes up a human. It tries to identify arms, heads, etc. It identifies each part and then tries to say this is a human. And now the also classical bounding box was introduced. And now there was a stagnation. Uh, the performance wasn't there, and the images for trading purposes, like like neural net came in 2008 in terms of object detection, but things stagnated. 
Uh, as I mentioned, uh, ImageNet was introduced in 2009 and Coco later, which means that everyone could train a neural net on reliable, very accurate data, large data set, 40 million pictures, and also Coco, Microsoft version of that and later. Uh, it now uh, region with CGN, uh, CNNs, uh, community neural networks came out in 2014 that built on this. Uh, we also got introduced to uh, things that are called two-stage detection and one-stage detection. A two-stage detection literally takes the image in two parts. It looks at areas of interest first and then applies um, uh, deep learning features on the regions of interest afterwards which means that you need to do a double pass, which is slow. One stage detectors literally look at the entire image at once. It is faster, but slightly less reliable. Currently in 2010, we were introduced to something that was called limited uh, regions of interest, as I mentioned. Most, uh, we're gonna talk about a CNN in the later picture, uh, that, that this uh, had 2000 regions per image. That is actually quite low which means that if you had a very high complex image, it was struggling. And also it looked unnecessarily potentially at 2000 regions because yeah, the picture might not be, um, the object of interest might not be inside the regions or all fall. Or, but no, uh, it didn't work in real time. It was really slow and it didn't learn. It only was uh, based on the image network. Back to the backdrop as we said earlier. In 2014, we were introduced to RCNN. Uh, it, uh, as I mentioned, it has had a bunch of regions up to about 2000. It, as, uh, as you can see here, um, divides the image up to so-called regions of interest, where it then warps and changes the regions, etc. runs the convoluted neural network on that, and then the classification. Building on that, you're gonna see a lot of RCNNs for the next few slides. Fast RCNN came out in 2014 or 2015. It, it, the, that decade, things were popping up all over the time. I had problems finding proper documentation for all of them. So sort of sorry about that. Uh, it changed away from using uh, regions of interest and used the entire image of the input back to the single, uh, the thing I discussed earlier. I uh, forgot the name about it. But now it uses the entire image of the input. It then builds regions of interests by pooling from the image, whatever that entirely means. Uh, it then relies on select so something called selective searches, uh, which is slow, as it is actually removed in 2015. This is what I'm saying. It, they came out fast. They came out very rapidly um, compared to the future. It removes selective search. I should have written down what that was. Separate net, and now they actually have a separate network that predicts proposed regions and do internal classification. It, it is an iterative process, but even so, it is now actually possible to do real time image, real time object detection. It is down to 0 0.2 seconds, comparatively to 49 seconds uh, on, the, on the three years earlier prior. Uh, Fast RCNN is the one that we talked about. I do only, I, I like how to just add. But yeah, and then we have uh, currently we are working with uh, mask RCN and mesh RCN, which one is one of the newer versions. They came out in 2017 and 2019, respectively. It is built on instant segmentation from 2017, which means that they can cover each pixel, which is of interest compared to, to the bounding boxes. It is also possible to do 3D mesh generation from 2D images in 2019. I still don't know entirely what that benefits object detection but it's according to wikipedia one of the main things of interest in that one and then we move over to it is the worst name in, in uh, the existence yolo you only look once yeah it is his name i hate it it uses the entire t uh it came out in 2015 i do believe it uses the entire image. It uses no uh, probability analysis, uh, for better or worse, but apparently for better, because it works really fast. One community in the neural network predicts bounding boxes and class probability. It, it does everything at once. It is really fast and got up to 45 uh, frames per second. That's high. 
and fast YOLO um, actually managed to do 155 frames per second, which is really, really good. It apparently struggles with spatial constraints. If things are too detailed or too tiny, it struggles hard. It prioritizes speeds. It is very easy to train. It is built into most, if not all, object detection networks. Uh, it is extremely easy to train. The most uh, current version came out in 2020. And the current best one is YOLO R, which came out in 2021. It is a spiritual successor. It is not the same for some reason. It just stole the name. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and also, um, one of the benefits of a lot of these network is that they are often included in a lot of libraries that already exist in libraries. Facebook Detectron, for example, the Detectron is created by Facebook. It has access to a lot of the already existing uh, networks, uh, which means that you can literally run all of these inside Detectron if you want to. It has, uh, it, it, it is run by Facebook. They have the money, they have the power, they have the research. It's a very, very, very good platform. And I do believe it's still currently under development, which is quite nice. It is easily modifiable. It is open source, I do believe. Uh, I did actually work on that last year. Uh, this is my uh, a test case of my system where I did uh, facial censoring in videos, etc. I never tried it real time because Google, uh, no, Google Colab is a bit slow. So we just used a basic model suit found one that was trained in faces and applied it to the video. It's quite easy to be honest. I had no experience in, in this stuff. And I feel like that is one of the benefits of in a lot of the abstraction that uh, the Tectron and uh, ImageNet and Frameworks, et cetera, gives you is that you don't need to know the underlying code. You don't need to understand how it works. It is now easy to just use, which is good because AI systems and object detection systems, et cetera, are just a black box. They are highly difficult to understand and even worse to build. And now you can just rely on other people's stuff. Uh, and I do believe that is the end of the this presentation part. I should have a, do anyone have any questions in regard to object detection before I move over to my project? We also have a QA and a thing at the end there, but because I'm gonna just do, do a skip over here. Right. I'm going to present my project. Team find team fight tactics, gizmos, and gadgets augment, augment identifier. Longest title ever. Uh, anywho, do any one of you know what team fight tactics is? Okay, good. Uh, do you have sound on? Because this might be loud. Uh, I don't know. Oh. Right, the quality is horrendous. Anyway, there we go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I was just afraid that uh, we're going to blow people's ears up. Mm. Anywho. We, do we need some? No, we don't. Okay. I'm just worried for a second. Anywho, uh, Team Fight Tactics is a 8v8 game. It is uh, created by uh, Riot Games. You, in each round of the game, you have a board the, uh, on the download side competing against an enemy uh, that has a board on the top top side. This is not important at all, but what I want you to kind of look at is these icons. These icons there and here, etc., are so-called augments. Uh, these are, when you, can I press next slide? It is turned to stop, sorry about that. When you play the game, you are three times a match presented with the choice of selecting so-called augments. Augments are permanent in-game buffs. There are 150 of them, difficult to identify. And yeah, a lot of them doesn't even have icons that kind of match the name. As you can see here, a lot of the text in the so-called augments is quite long and difficult to remember, which is why, when you're in game, it's easy. You can literally right click on all augments, either yours or the enemies, to see what they have and what they do. Which is why we come to Twitch. When watching a Twitch streamer, how do you know what kind of augment this Twitch streamer has? 
you don't. You need to ask them. This guy has current 8,000 years. If you need to inform people every five minutes what to augment he has, people will be insane. It is also difficult for people watching to kind of understand what's going on and what the different, different kind of different augments do. Like if I want to learn, I want to understand, etc. I want to know what those three augments does very fast without looking up a table with 150 pictures, which is, yeah, uh, you just assume in here. Uh, these are some of the augments. There are a lot. Um, but yeah, coming back to the later. Uh, this is, uh, in, I took heavily inspiration from a overlay which is created for the game Dead by Daylight, which in a Twitch stream, if you hover over the right sign here, you can actually get in screen notification or information. It is just a hover over perks, or you can hover over the perks and get information. And I was like, I can do that. I couldn't, but you know, that, that was the general, <laughs> that, that was the general idea. Uh, now the problem here was that, I mean, I was informed that it used computer vision. I talked to some of the guys who used it. I assumed it was real time. It wasn't. It relies on servers in the background that runs the stream and runs computer vision on the uh, on the uh, images down below. I don't have the opportunity to do, do that. I even uh, talked to Twitch developers, the guys that run the website, that also informs me that this isn't possible. You can't do this, which is annoying. Uh, so I did an expect thing. I built a website that takes in images and then runs into an image recognition network. Because this apparently is a website. It's a transparent website that runs JavaScript uh, to kind of check mouse position, et cetera, and then give you, give you information, et cetera. So I, I did that without tying it to Twitch, though, because that was impossible. So why even bother? Uh, Anywho, this is some raw information about all of the items. They are static, always the same size, more or less. Same background. Uh, they are black in the background. Appears mainly in two places throughout the game. They move slightly between the boards, which kind of ruined the entire thing that I had, uh, had in mind. They are tiny. I can't scan them down, up and down, which means that the accuracy is kind of difficult to uh, work with. I work with a huge input picture. The, the picture here is 1080, 920. Uh, and uh, yeah, I would like to also, also note that this presentation was written a week ago or something like that. And I've made a lot of progress, uh, especially in the areas that I had difficulties with, but I haven't updated. I had, there, there were still issues and I feel like they're still relevant, but, but I'll get back to that later. Because uh, this was the uh, design that I had in mind for my Twitch development app. User mouse position over Twitch and then went to the server, image detection, spit it out the information and showed it to the uh, user. This assumed that it would work in real time. It doesn't, sadly. So I built this instead. I have a website where I upload an image to storage, where I have a computer vision server that monitors and reacts to new files that updates the endpoint and the website gets the information from the endpoint. I have this running on my uh, the PC at home, so I can't actually show you all of this stuff, but uh, I'll try to show you as best as I can. The website is at the right here. It takes in pictures from users, preferably in 1080. It uploads it to storage. It displays the results up here for the debugging purposes. It then lists all of the found augments. Um, uh, yeah, it could have been improved a bit with a get endpoint and stuff. But yeah, I need to get the endpoint. This takes a second. I managed to get it down from 15 seconds to uh, below a second. So that was quite good. As you can see here, it's not perfect. It actually managed to, it managed to for some reason, detect that there's an augment there that, that there is. So yeah, these are all the icons for debugging purposes. I do believe the image is very tiny, but this makeshift armor fits that one, portable forge fits that one. Phone in front line fits that one. And I do believe the smoke bomb is the one that is incorrect at that point, which is the um, The computer vision system, the server that I talked about, performs initial set and startup. It loads from the Google uh, Drive, downloads all the icons, etc. It then 
monitors of monitor the storage. That's when it just run. It runs the core look on detected images and then deletes it when it's done. It ends up the uh, storage. I perform statistical analysis of the assumed augmented areas, which is why I managed to get it down from 15 seconds to one second. Because uh, as you can see here, it is mostly in this area, which I run a statistical analysis to get the area that, are mo that is most likely to contain the augments. And then I just inform them, have a look in this area, ignore everything else. It also runs in black and white which is why I have some issues with augments that are multicolored, but have the same icons, more on that later. It performs template matching, which is why I cover template matching so extensively early on. Uh, it registers and look up an augment inf information in the dictionary, quite easy, and then it posts requesting to the endpoint. Oh, yeah. Uh, on uh, as the icons all were transparent, they were all 256 times 256. I couldn't work with that. The computer vision system also loads in all the transparent ink icons, gives them a uh, background, and crops them down to the same size. Size matters a lot, as you will see later on. Uh, the, all of the icons, all 150 of them, are used for the template matching. It then use it then has a threshold to see if it will disregard it or uh, count it. Uh, which is, um, which it then compare it, compares itself to. It then performs a dictionary uh, at lookup and uh, creates a JSON and sends the JSON object to the endpoint. Okay. Yeah, because th this is how the input system works. You have the transparent image, you add the background, because I mentioned earlier, they all have ba black backgrounds. Uh, they were supposed to be at the same time. Um, yeah, and then they crop them. Yeah. The endpoint, the endpoint is just a Python server, runs Flask. It uh, has a get handler and a post request handler. No, uh, no multiprocessing. So it actually, I needed to send a post, re a post request from the actual image server to the endpoint, which is kind of unnecessary. They run at the same server. So, but I didn't manage to find easy ways of sharing memory. It is difficult, apparently. They are their own instances, and apparently that's a might not work. It, it works. In terms of issues, this is images 256 to, and times 256. The image overlaying it is also 256 and 256. They occupy a large, the, the difference between the images in terms of how much occupy is, is large, which we end up with. Uh, error in the cropping algorithm. How do you define a cropping algorithm that takes as much as possible from the gray image, but also takes as little as possible and doesn't overlap with the uh, this part? It was difficult without literally sitting and then identifying and manually cropping all of them. Was well, not, not something I wanted to do for 150 images. I had to rename them all. That was, yeah. Here is the scale issue. Same input image. But I scale the icons for it to 45 times 45 um, in size on the left one and 42 times 42 on the right one. As you can see, the, the amount that is able to identify and accuracy depends very high on the input images, on the sizes, etc. I also believe that has something to do with the cropping algorithm, which is bothersome. Uh, some of these issues has now been fixed, but it's still, it was still an issue by using template matching. They have to be basically fixed with perfect, which is not great. Uh, one of the other issues is that these are the patch notes from League of Legends for two days ago. I'd like to note the two first one, where they change the color and looks of the icons. I have no way of updating that. I have no way of updating the information is stored in all of the dictionaries, etc. There are no APIs, no endpoints, no nothing I can take, which means that every time there's an update, I would need to manually update all of my information and change the icon. Uh, I assume they will use the same uh, look, but different colors. There are three main colors. You have the yellow one, the gray one, and the platinum one. This is difficult. And I hope that in the future, they will make this stuff more readily available and easy to think 
like in a, a API endpoint or something. The game came out 10 days ago and it just stated it's not priority, which is fair. Finding some discussion. Template matching is very inaccurate. It is not possible to verify uh, as I had a high rate of high false positives. Uh, it requires very easy, very specific inputs, size and et cetera. And it, uh, it, that's, but one of the good things about template matching is just if I get 10 more icons, I can just put them into the folder and it will automatic, uh, automatic address itself comparatively to a neural net you need to read, right? It is difficult to do color recognition on random input. Now, color recognition is difficult on random input. I tried to work on that based on input from you guys earlier on. It works poorly at a scale, but most threading could work. Uh, as you can see here, these are, this is the time it takes to run one template matching uh, when I run it on a very smaller image. As you can see, it's a linear scale, more images, more time. Compared to your neural network, that should be working quite a lot uh, faster. It is very easy to implement. It, is up to, uh, it can be optimized to still slow. I managed to get it down from 15 sex to 0.6 sex. Uh, without using CUDE, actually, by using statistical analysis, ignoring channels, etc. Uh, I do believe that if I would have done this again, I would have used a neural net, like YOLO, etc. Uh, and usage of image classification could also speed the process up, because I don't actually care where they are, I just need to want to know what is in the image. Mm -hmm. It mostly works in black and white, yeah, because because uh, that is the recommended, because if you want to work on three, three channels, things get a bit slow. But in one of my examples that um, you have three icons that are the same icon, but different color, I could, for example, say that if you are one of these three, uh, do a color check. So I could easily just do a color average of the bounding box to see what kind of icons there are. But again, there, it requires more work uh, and more implementation and a bit more overhead, which is, bothersome. I do actually have a live, I were supposed to have a live demo uh, on the, this thing, but currently it doesn't work. And I'm not entirely sure as to why. Uh, all right, you are, your scroll wheel is the other way around. That is why. <laughs> yeah, that actually makes it possible to scroll. Uh, I don't actually know why this is so angry though. Not able to run like at all. Yeah, but it seems to be stuck in because this this is the is this image. No, if you just write dog, why is this in here? Mm, dog PNG. You work with collab or you work with one of all? Uh, Mostly collab. It's okay. way easier to just work with. Right? If I just if I try to, what day it is it today? No, it's the 18th. If, I, if I just do, uh, oh yeah, oh, it's a bit slow. Uh, can I, can I press this? I can call it. I'm not sure why it's, why it's struggling. Uh, one time, one more to remember. Yeah, it manages to read all the icons. And then it breaks. Why do you break? Yeah, it doesn't manage to. I don't even recognize the image it's trying to look at. In the test folder, you can find, say, unknown them. And, um, my side, unhashable type non error. Didn't it manage to, what? Yeah, this is the typical thing when you try to, my side replies my side, unhashable type. It's pinned for a reason because it worked. Uh, yeah, anywho. Um, yeah. 
I'll just ignore that. Yeah, so this is the output. It takes in, the, it takes in an input, and then it up tops here, it spits out all the information about all the icons you found. And the image you send is Apple. Uh, this one is just, you can just upload it in Google for application purposes, but yeah. on the web server, you send the image we have post. No, no, you don't even do that. You just upload it to a local storage on the on the computer. I see. And then and the, yeah, and then the server or the, in the computer network, um, just checks if something happened in that um, in the, in, in the folder. Yeah, everything is in Python. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I accept the web pages and a bit of the JavaScript, etc. But yeah, uh, back to the fancy uh, yeah. diagram, etc. I'm actually really annoyed this didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. And uh, type error, unhashable type, numpy error. It shouldn't. I'm trying to cast it to a set because set uh, removes all unique. Uh, if I try to, yeah, the page. If I try to open this one, then. I'm going to give it 30 more seconds and then when you want because if it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Still, I'm not entirely sure because why does it, why does it do? Oh, right, I was, that was demonstrating Python for someone. Yeah, because it managed to load all the icons, so there's no reason as to why it should. Yeah. This is what I said when the dictionary is like the dictionary being bloody huge. There's a lot of text. Yeah, th this is the, the input algorithms, the cropping algorithms. Yeah, as you can see here, some of the icons actually are cropped out, which is a problem. Yeah, so. But what is that image? And I think that then that might break something. I could just write test folder. Yeah, content test folder. Unknown. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Shit happens. Back to the presentation. Yeah, it works semi-reliably. And as I mentioned, uh, I have updated all of the icons because I was informed that I was using icons that wasn't actually in the game, which is why the accuracy was so bad and they weren't fitting. So I downloaded 150 more icons the other day, and then I manually had to rename all of them because of the icons being in a bad standard. I don't know what kind of idiot to upload those, I guess. But as you can see here, the accuracy is quite high. But there are some issues with, for example, the icons as you can see here. They are the same with a different color. So you get false positives. Same here, actually. That one also has three. Cybernetic implants two, because it finds cybernetic implants one, two, and the other way. So that's an issue that I have to kind of figure out. But again, it's just basically check the color, but it requires a bit more effort. Uh, and that is it, I do believe. QA for everything here. Any questions? So, how, how did you run down from 15 seconds to 5 seconds? Uh, statistical analysis. I basically ignored all of the images that wasn't interested. I, I put all the images on top of each other mm -hmm. in Photoshop, and then I literally took like what is the least area that is actually that will be relevant. I see. And you the area that you analyzed. Yeah, by a lot because I went from like yeah 1920 times 1080 down to. I think I'm looking at 36,000 pixels instead of like a few millions. Mm -hmm. I'm still surprised though, because I've removed 91% of the pixels or something like that, but I think still only manages to get it from 15 to 0 0.6. 0 0.6 was with optimal uh, stuff when I run Q down all of that stuff as well, but I think that one second is what it's turned out, because it was a nightmare to make working at 0 0.7. I also believe that there's some issues with uh, computer vision because it seems to be the first iteration is always slower than the second one and it seems to reset itself sometimes, which is why you end up with 
very weird difference between in terms of timing. I mean, 0 0.01 seconds like that adds up. This is used to be like 0 0.1 seconds, now we're down to 0 0.0. 0 0.001 ish. Down to on the right side of which is quite much faster. Which is yeah. So that that off is good, I guess. So I we we couldn't wait 15 seconds. That was good. No, you had to kind of get it as fast as possible. Now it actually manages to update the web server so fast that by the time it refreshes itself, it actually uh, updates itself, which is nice. Yeah. How is that the image? How to get the frame out of our uh, hmm? How do you get the actual frame from the source? Uh, uh, from uh, did, 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 did. I had a uh, down here. No, the, the, the whole image. Oh, yeah, the whole image is basically me taking an uh, image of the Twitch stream. So you take yeah, I just screenshot it. Because okay. again, it was supposed to, in theory, you were supposed to just run it through, take an image when you hovered over it, yeah. and then it would take a snapshot of the, yeah. the screen, pass it, and then return it. Yeah. But then there are some apparently some delay. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, because Twitch just said that we don't do that, and there are currently no ways of getting uh, pure snapshots from streams, etc., without actually uh, running the streams in the backgrounds and then kind of snapshotting the stre streams and inputs. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the server capacity, and I felt like that wasn't priority. The my ultimate goal was to find a way that this could be done for a streamer or whatever without them needing to download external tools. Because mm -hmm. I could build a Python uh, Python script that ran in the background that occasionally did a snapshot of an application by like Cave Legends in here or TFT and then passed it along. But then you're again, okay, then you need to make uh, people trust you to run random code. So I just wanted a Twitch extension, which you can, I build a Twitch extension, it's mm -hmm. just a web page that overlays it. But it has a lot of restriction, and also there's a like six or ten seconds delay between um, Twitch's server and what we see, and um, it needs to basically be real time. So I am limited by the technology of my time, I guess. But yeah. And then we have the uh, slight practical. I don't. What is the time? Oh yeah, I've been. So five minutes. Yeah, um, I didn't actually look at the time because I could just do a code instead. This is literally a broad stuff and uh, an image a image recognition network tries to kind of, or you're trading an image recognition network, mm -hmm. which is slightly interesting. But if I'll now five minutes left, the code might be more interesting. Okay, that's good. Yeah, this is quite, I do recommend looking this up. It's quite interesting. Yeah, it's quite fun. Yeah, it is basically you get a prompt and then you're asked to draw it. Mm -hmm. I should have double checked if it works on phone. <laughs> and then the image I recognition network is trying to recognize it. Okay. It's like draw. I, I had a weird one earlier today. You're like draw a mermaid and then you start drawing and then network just shouts out. I see a hammer. I see a pool. I see a person. Oh, I know it's a mermaid. And then you can have a look at what other people have to draw. Okay. Apparently, you can also download the data set for training of the neural networks, which is right. also interesting. Do they use what you could draw as a Yeah, yeah. apparently. So it, it learns them, I guess. And then you can also look at some really weird drawings and some really good drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, if you don't have time to finish stuff, I do actually need to get into the group. Uh, where am I? Uh, plus. Uh, who I'm just gonna double check. There's no, there's no. Yeah, that's the that's the last time. But yeah, in the report, I'm gonna. Eh, nah. <laughs> Spelling is not my stronger set. Uh, I'm just gonna. Can I do that? No, I can't. Ah, come on. Log in. If I need to log in with my Google account again. Yeah, but I did believe that. 
Yeah, a lot easier. Yeah, because we are in a private mode, I think we have to always try to keep an edge. Ah, right. Yeah, I mean, who cares if my G-man gets public? Eh. And I need to verify again. Gee, says security is the worst. Literally delivered a complaint on the two stacks of authentication for Hotmail earlier. It keeps kicking out. So I need to verify every day, multiple times a day. It's like that Yeah, it might have been. Uh, do, 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 do. Where's my yeah library? It is short, but uh, I asked yesterday, and you said uh, I had to make one. No, I didn't say you have to make it. You have to make it. Yeah, and this was the easy <laughs> one, and I agree. What is this identifying? I think the I think that your Mac believes my my mouse is a keyboard. It is relatively short. Yeah, yeah, hard, hard business. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There's like still only one person online. But yeah. What is that? No, excuse me. Yeah, that is all, I think. Um, where is it? Yeah, where is Deepash? I don't know. <laughs> Deepash. <laughs> Can't see. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been able unable to see? <laughs> That's not great. No, Just the Kahoot. Oh, are we screen sharing? Yes, we were. Yeah, okay. but you still need to see it. <laughs> I would change. I would. I might have accidentally changed the uh, something. You might have changed. Yeah, know? it seems to. Add. Okay, we good now, Deepesh. Can you see now? Yeah. 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 I think I accidentally managed to change what screens yeah, it was yeah. looking at. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna give you a few seconds to get it. I think I can. I, I can kick people. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Power. The power. Yeah, no, right. There we go. Right. Okay. Then we'll press start. CFT AI test. Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually might need to restart it because I don't know if the random questions or answers, etc. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's sorry, but I, I need to click the uh, where do where do I stop it? Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, quick game. It's in game. Hey, page. One diamond. Yeah. Now yes. You, yeah. <laughs> now you manage. How do I game book? Yeah, okay, yeah. This is, I was uh, putting it simply a bit uh, lazy in terms of um, randomizing. Answer to the first question. Yes. It <laughs> might be the first question because now they're random. Sorry about that, Dipush. Yeah, the, it's in my thing. Yeah, because I might have been like just putting it in the same spot kind of and just hoping that randomizing could help. Okay. there we go let's try this again that is yeah not too much yeah can i speed this up a bit no true or false two stage detectors approximately object detection before justification Is 
Can I also? I can. What? Yeah, I don't know what happens if I press me. It is true, yes. And that is one of the reasons that they are bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so if you need to do a double pass. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not an answer. <laughs> did we miss? Did one of did I forget that? I yes, they are really fast in theory, at least. Uh, I, I find it funny that the, like, they are supposed to be random, and we got them after each other. So then. Three random stuff. Multi slags. What is the best? What is the benefits of augmentation? Multi. I feel like some of this I might not actually mention explicitly, but <laughs> yeah, because you can create more training data, but you can also get more. Uh, diverse line data. For example, with the um, stop signs I talked about, you can just flip them, and that might be a realistic scenario for spotting purposes. It's, it's kind of improves the model. Uh, it doesn't specifically improve the model. It, that is true. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like that was strike the bait, but it doesn't it actually. Improve it. <laughs> uh, you get it more hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but it doesn't affect the model itself was kind of the logic here, yeah. If I find it difficult to actually write a code about this because the field is complex. Yeah, I know this. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was <laughs> Yeah, we might have lost it. Yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, no, yeah. Did anyone actually answer 750 on the last one? No. No, because no, on the timeline, it was oh, yeah, the straight. Timeline, yeah, because yeah, yeah. on the timeline, it was to the left for the actual correct answer. So I, ha I had it in just a bit of it. Uh, yeah, Yolo is leading. I mean, it's, it is kind of one of the best. What is backdrop? We had a. Um... I mean, I'm gonna press skip because I think we lost the user. Yeah, because it's actually the neural net address itself, but it doesn't necessarily improve the object detection. That is, uh, it is uh, on the network and not on the object detection part. Because you have the network which uses ob or object detection uses the network, but you can use the network to do anything. So that that is a uh, backdrop is something just general. Hmm? I think it's backdrop, I think. yeah, back propagation. Yeah, but they have people short in it. Yeah, but it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, it, it is uh, just a, a short near. I think it's mostly common in like all neural networks these days because yeah. it is one of the best ways of making it learn instead of doing the rounds again, I guess. You can then just go backwards. It is. Slow though, but it's good. But neural nets are slow. So next one. Quick. Yeah, sir. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, is the, is the internet in here bad? I do believe this is a multi one. Yeah, it didn't. I forgot to write multi in the title. I just find it difficult in like in this one. Like, should I write how many correct answers there are? <laughs> but yeah, and no one answered heat map. That that was fake. That's good. Yeah, so I got six answers here. Aren't we on the five? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> weird, isn't it? <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, they might have yeah, this one. 
Yay. That's weird. What is image now? Oh crap, I know. <laughs> I always I feel I always feel like that is one of the bad settings mm -hmm. with Kahoot. Yeah, the, the Google kind of, um, you know, triggered. Yeah. Like, uh ImageNet is not actually run by Google. Right. That is Coco, which is run by Microsoft. The ImageNet is just a reads stand right scientific. Yeah, but wasn't Google behind it? No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I think so. They might have because they they like this stuff, but huh? Yeah. I might, yeah, but the way and I still they open it up. They, they, they right, okay. I am gonna double check that. Yeah. Still, the way I phrased it is I like know, you know, know, it's not a search framework. <laughs> yeah, it is the annotated images, but it's not a database of images. And then there's only I think it's like two more. Yeah, I feel like the uh, Kahoot could find some timing is yeah. What is your cell name? I can't spell. It's supposed to say optimal. <laughs> yeah. No, I just hate my keyboard. Yeah. Oh man, is that one? That was nice. Yeah. And then I do believe it's the last one. Yeah. Again, it's supposed to say objects. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I know, right? M most of my spelling mistakes are the ones that I know this, and then I get annoyed about it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I said this because the classification is just to see if an image contains something, but not necessarily where it is, because that requires more resources. So you can kind of skip out on that part for efficient detection. Um, is that it? No, that, this is a plot. No, no, uh, 10 of them. Yeah. I forgot what it stands for. Yeah. I know what it is, but uh, yeah. Uh, like it, uh, the hog and uh, the hog network actually introduces um, dynamic scaling. It actually works in the different scales comparatively to the one before its predecessor, uh, the template matching that actually just works on one scale. Uh, I think that is it. Um, when was Nushka? No, no, third place on Nushka, I mean, YOLO on second. And did Mother manage? Did I manage to do YOLO? Yes. The last question. Only requires like one, yeah. Like a runner up with like did just all of them. Yeah. I think that is it cool. for me. Thank you very much. Questions for Ben? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, now's, now's the time. Mm -hmm. well, I am here. So we'll to Amstrad. Yeah. We'll yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I... No problem. Do you want to be recorded? OK, so we will stop recording. So you can uh, just give me, go, go to mute to this more and say stop recording. Okay, bye, Deborah.